ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. I hope that uh, you guys have had a good week this week. Summer is in full force. We've gone through the solstice, and now uh, it seems like we just got to summer, and the days are going to start shortening again, and I don't know where we're going to go with that. Um, I know that a lot of you have been fussing about the fact that you feel like you're behind, and one more time I'm going to say, nobody is behind. It's all good. Do it at your own pace. You're supposed to enjoy this. Um, just a little reminder, enjoy the process and have fun with it. If you really want to know the truth, somebody was fussing about being behind, I think, on Instagram. And I said, you want to know the truth? I've got four very partially started uh, things right now. <laughs> I haven't gotten very far on anything. So don't feel bad. Um, I did want to say that we were really glad that you guys did our poll that we posted. And we will be posting another poll later on in the week. Um, well, not this week. Maybe next week. Anyway. In the next week, we'll post the poll on uh, textiles um, to see what you guys are interested in. But we did do the poll for little mini videos. And the winner was bed gown hack number one, which is the cuff turn box. So we'll do a little short video for you on that. And I think we're going to try and get that out to you. We are going to take this Friday off and next Friday off because we think all of you are going to be otherwise occupied because it's the 4th of July weekend. Even if you're like only having a barbecue with your germ pod, you'll be doing something, I hope, fun and happy for the 4th of July weekend. So we're not going to, uh, you know, fill up YouTube with videos that you don't need to watch. You need to be outside and enjoying yourself. So with that said, we're going to take this Friday off and next Friday off, and the following Friday, which is July 10th, we'll do our little short video for you on uh, cuff hacks. Um, the other thing that I wanted to announce to you, um, I don't know how many of you uh, follow costuming drama or you follow our costume uh, Instagram, but, and, and I know I always post every week what day we're gonna be up. They put the schedule out and I always put it in our stories. Um, but the, there was a great idea amongst, amongst the costumer, uh, costumers, um, about doing a kind of a virtual, uh, costume college because we're all missing it this year. So coinciding with those days, there will be all kinds of wonderful things for you guys to watch. And we are going to be participating in that as well. So one of the other videos that we had talked to you about was the one about uh, petticoat hacking, how to adjust your petticoat over uh, hip enhancements, you know, any type of like a bum row, et cetera. And so we're going to do a video for you on that. And then we have another video that'll be a surprise. And you'll get that video when, uh, we, when the whole... Um, Thing is posted they're going to do they're going to actually do a big um, announcement and they're going to post all of the uh, days and times that everybody's going to do their releases and they're just going to fill youtube up with all these wonderful costuming where again videos. are you posting that uh it'll be it'll be on the costume guide if you follow instagram costume guide i believe it's costume guide but um and somebody can reconfirm for me if i'm wrong but uh, Costuming Drama also is helping to orchestrate this. So if you follow her, she will be making announcements or you can send her a message um, and she can fill you in. But yeah, it's gonna, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. And we even have somebody that's talking about doing the red carpet for us. So there's going to be a virtual red carpet, which you guys can all participate in. So that's exciting too. So it's going to be a good summer, you know, if you can't get outside or if you're having to just be with your germ pod and can't go see other people, um, you can kind of enjoy your costuming virtually. So. And for those of you who are not on Instagram, we will work with Costube to figure out a way to get um, the schedule out there because mm -hmm. these will all be on YouTube. Right. Um, and so we can actually do it through our newsletter. Yeah. So if you are on our email list, um, we can we can coordinate with um, 
um, costume drama to see about putting that out there um, through our email. And I'm sure everybody else will get on that bandwagon too. Anybody that has got any type of a, a email list or uh, other uh, people calling. Sorry about that. Um, and it wasn't anything important, I'm sure. Anyway, um, so that's, that's um, Coco. That's our virtual Coco, which I'm excited about. And we also, you know, I know you guys are patiently waiting for calves. And I promise it's going to be wonderful. But we told you last week that Christina is with us full time now as of Monday. So yay, Christina. Unfortunately, that means that she also has to do other work besides um, YouTubing. She's doing a really great job learning what B&T is all about. So she actually learned how to use the bolting machine she today, was right? Awesome. She, she bolted like six or seven fabrics today. Woo woo. Yeah. Yeah. So guess who has never done it correctly in what, 26 years? Yeah. Anyway, I'm that girl. But, but apparently Christina has one of those heads that she could wrap it around a very huge piece of machinery that can eat your hands. And she did a good job, but she's learning all things B and T, and so we're having to relegate when and how we can go about doing, um, you know, YouTube, uh, uh, doing the taping and also or filming and also doing editing and stuff, which we're still kind of working with our schedule. However, with the caps, as I was going to say, it is going to be a grand finale. You will love it. We're going to give you a choice of two caps to choose from, although you can make both of them because you'll get the pattern for both. Um, and we, I also have a collection of caps that I'm going to share with you as part of it. We're going to do lots of things to engage you and make it more exciting than just putting a cap together. And we're hoping to do that starting August, let's see, what do I have here? August 7th. Yeah, August 7th, yeah. So we're hoping to roll that out on August 7th. So we're giving ourselves a little bit of a break, but in between our break, we're giving you three new videos, but they just won't be so long. Um, anyway, so that covers all of that. Um, we also have a new website that, that this is Brooks Baby, um, that we've been working on and it we're hoping to get it up in the next month so that's our big goal there is to get our new website up and we hope that that new website will be easier for you to navigate we won't have as much confusion about some of the things that our old website have had and it'll also be um, um, what do you call it phone and iPad friendly or or surface friendly or whatever you use so it, this new website is just going to be a lot easier to navigate we hope than our old website was um, so look for a whole new look from Burnley and Trowbridge in the next month so with that I wondered if anybody had bed gown questions <laughs> anything going on or is everybody just like sewing so fast there are doing a lot such a of great people job. working on different things. We've got, um, let's see, people are working on shifts. They're working on seams of their bed gown. Someone's just started their pocket. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh yeah, wow, lots of lots of shifts are being someone up shifted their shift aside for their bed gown. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I, of course, I'm also still working on my apron, my pocket, um, your petticoat, my, no, I you finished, finished your one of my two petticoats. Um, the ruffled apron is pretty much nothing's happened since <laughs> a week, three weeks, four weeks ago. And I've got the other bed gone in progress. So I'm, I'm about 50, 50. So well, I'm she's glad actually, she's moving faster than me. By the time I get home at night, it's like. Sewing, looking, no, can't see it, TV, couch, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so not a lot of sewing gets done at night with me. I do try and do some sewing on the weekends, which is good. But um, I'm hoping to get this done. And actually, I wanted to, I've got this great fabric that I've been hoarding for a very long time. It's a wonderful 
retro I don't know what to call it because it's not it's not a historic fabric but it's really neat because it has a lot of the colorings of 18th century chintzes and it's a oriental um, scenery fabric and I thought that would be great fun to make like a, a modern wear it all the time uh, bag gown out of that so now my big decision is do I want to line it uh, you know with like one of our sateens or one of our linens or do I want to go find a fun contrasting printed fabric to put with it so decisions probably I should not go find another fabric because I do have a hoard um, but we'll see we'll see I have to pick the right thing um, for those of you that are working on uh, your shifts, the one that came in second on our little hacks was the, um, or not hacks, but we had the closer look of underarm gussets for shirts and shifts. So we will do that. It just may not happen right now, but we will definitely do that because that's something that um, we talked about a long time ago. It's been on our two videotape list for probably a year now. Um, so that'll definitely happen and the being able to do the sleeve with cuff um, will definitely do that for you um, at a future date so we'll we will definitely hit up all the things that you guys ask about eventually with with time and if there's anything that we can help you with virtually you know during our hour when we have our our fun distance socializing um, then we're happy to do that at that time as well. So, All right, so a few of the questions that we have so far. Um, first off, uh, a few questions about some fabric, um, about whether we can use checked fabric or plaid fabric for uh, the bed gown. Okay. Um, and uh, Time Smith brought up a great point about the plaid wrapping gowns that have been appearing on Facebook this week with a lot of discussion about those. Yeah, there was some one, that one bed gown, which I posted on our Facebook as well, if you want to go to that and look at it. Um, and it does apparently have an 18th century date to it. He called it a banyan, which it is not. It's a wrapping gown. Um, and it appears to be, uh, there's no way of truly knowing without knowing the dimensions of it whether a man or a woman wore it but I would suspect it was a man um, there's a wonderful portrait and I wish Mark Hutter was on here because he would know which one I'm talking about because I always say it's the Mark Hutter portrait it's there's a gentleman who is reclining on a sofa with his ankles crossed wearing slippers <gasps> yes mm -hmm. it looks and he just has, like Mark yeah and he has on what looks like very contemporary fabric um, and it's sort of a plaid design um, but I believe it's in silk so you know that they existed um, as far as checks um, or what we would modern call plaid which they basically called checks um, there are some documentations for it my suggestion is if you really want to do something like that to see what you can find um, ahead of time just to kind of if, if you're going for HA, if you're not, you know, the world is your oyster, you can make it out of whatever fabric you want and do as you please. Um, but if you're trying to do HA, you're trying to go, um, maybe go to events or you're with a group that has rules, then my strong suggestion is, is that you do a little bit of research and come up with some um, runaway accounts or um, something that give, or, or an extant garment that gives you some credibility for it. Typically, what we found, I mean, like with the Colonial Williamsburg one, it is a print inside and out. With the Winneter one, it's a print inside and out. With the one I studied at Platt, it's a print outside and a check inside. And it's distinctly a check inside. It's not something you can turn inside out or anything. It's a lining. Um, I do see checks being used a lot as linings. Um, when I do see checks, they seem to have... You know, I think there has been some primary documentation, and don't quote me on this, I can't remember distinctly, um, but I recall some um, primary, um, a primary, it might have been a diary or something, talking about checks that are being chiefly used for men's shirts and children's uh, clothing. Um, so that's just one. But there's lots of things out there. And, and if I tell you that in my research, I've found the mother load of checks. There's so many, you know, i.e. 
checks as in what you know is a check today and what you know is a plaid today, which is called checks. Um, there's just so many of them. There's gobs and gobs. Um, now, in my case, a lot of it was with children's clothing. Um, I have seen them in sample books. Um, I have seen them as linings. There are some, I believe there are some documents, um, some primary documents of runaways that are wearing checked, checked uh, um, bag gowns. Um, these are also typically, you know, unless there was one, I think somebody quoted one that was an indentured servant and another one was a slave. Um, so they're out there. And that's the long answer to a short yeah. question. <laughs> um, can you clarify again for everyone what the difference is between a wrapping gown and a banyan? Yes. And is a wrapping gown just an extension of a bed gown? It is, basically. Um, a, a wrapping gown is, is built the same basic way as a bed gown. It is a T-shaped garment. Um, it does not have any fitting to it, per se. It's loose. Um, and is typically, you know, it can be closed with a sash or not closed uh, or closed with a bow in the case of a woman, um, like a, a silk ribbon. Um, it is a um, very unstructured, so built like a bed gown with various applications. It can be built so it has a kind of a rolled back facing. Um, it can be built like ours is built. I don't know that I've seen one with a cut neck line but the other two yes um, and it can be built with like extra pleats in the hip area or or a center back pleat or with no pleats at all just cut basically like ours was cut um, a banyan is a structured garment that has a set in sleeve it is also worn as a, a leisure type of garment basically worn in indoors um, but it is more structured. So you sometimes see banyans with buttons down the front or even double-breasted banyans, um, but they always have a set-in sleeve. So that's, that's my take on it. All right. Um, that was, we do have a question about the lining. Um, of the bed gown mm -hmm. and I'll show that in a moment mm -hmm. um, good I don't have to sew yeah <laughs> put my stuff away and um, you can sew. oh no 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 you can start sewing uh. yeah you can sew you can sew um, <laughs> there was a question about um, if there could be a uh, sew along eventually about the um, like kerchief that you're wearing in your Instagram profile picture you're wearing the blue I think. Which one? I don't remember. Is it your 1780s or 90s outfit? You'll have to look and see. Cause yeah, I'm going to have to look. Oh, I know what one you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, it's just a big triangular kerchief that's ruffled. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that that exist. Also, there's white work um, kerchiefs that exist. Um, so, yeah, that, yeah. Put that into the comments, the comments, um, after this live, when it finally uploads. The last time, it, it really took a long time. I don't know what its problem was. But um, after it uploads, go ahead and put in the comments that you would like to see a sew along like that. And that way it's there, and it'll help us remember, and we'll put it on our little video, never-ending video list. Um, Aurora Celeste is wondering when the dates for the fall workshops will be posted. Okay. The dates are posted. They are on our website. Oh, when the registration, sorry. Uh, when registration, the registration will. Registration will not be before the end of July and possibly the beginning of August. We are just really monitoring what's going on here in the United States. And in all honesty, I have no desire to risk anyone's health. For a workshop so I am just remiss to be in a hurry to put those up only to feel uncomfortable and have to cancel them um, so I really don't see registration opening up before then I'm gonna see what happens you know there's a lot of gloom and doom on the news again and so let's see how it plays out over the next few weeks 
Let's see what happens. And um, Nami has a question about when we when we ever going to have this uh, so along live chat happy hour that we've been Ooh. occasionally talking about. Yeah, we are talking about. So it'll be at a later date. So we'll do our cap so along in August, right? So I would say probably September when they tell us we can't go anywhere again. <laughs> um, aren't I being optimistic? Um, that maybe in September, what I'd like to do is do a Zoom live. Um, so I can take a hundred guests. Um, and so if somebody, you know, if somebody, it may mean that you it may have to wait in the waiting room and change places with people or whatever, if we get a big turnout. But what I'd love to do, and Brooke and I had talked about this, it means she's the only reason she wants to do this, cause it'll make me finish all my projects is that we will wear all the things that we made. And we want you to wear all the things that you made and bring your favorite drink. So we think that would be lots of fun and everybody can take turns showing off their completed ensembles. Including Angela yeah. and me. Yeah. <laughs> We've got so many, so many projects. So many projects. All the projects. We have all the pro I have lots of ideas, but when I physically have to make the ideas, that's when I kind of run into a roadblock. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's what we're talking about. And so we will give you plenty of time, make a big announcement and give you plenty of time to... Uh, to prepare for it so it can be a fun little party that we have. So. All right, so we're going to switch places for just a few minutes. You can continue asking questions because yep. Angela is going to see all your comments and she can answer them while I demonstrate or ask me to answer them. Um, and mm -hmm. then we'll switch back after I explain the lining. If you have any specific bed gown construction questions about the collar, um, this will be a good time to ask it because I can do a little bit of that as well. If not, we'll then move on to the rest of our chat, which is all the fun things sitting behind her head. <laughs> okay. okay, musical chairs. So good at it. All right. Angela, right. can you check so, to make sure that like my head's okay? Since your, your head's okay, although you're really tall. How did you get so tall? <laughs> and you can see she has on her apron again. Got my apron on. I don't even know where my apron is. It's downstairs. Oh, okay. Brittany borrows it. Oh, Brittany borrows so, it. So okay. let me get. And Christina has her own apron, but I think we're gonna have to bring her over to the talk side and make her hand sew an apron. All right, so let me get out my, my tools. Do you want this to be closer up or just? Um, you know? Let's see what, what needs to be seen. So okay. I have had fun with this. The ticking that I chose and the other fabric that I'm using for the lining work very differently. <laughs> and they've been moving around. So I've had to go back and do a lot of basting, which I know everyone will be really excited about, especially Christina. I know you're watching. Um, so I've just basted like crazy the, to keep everything in place. Um, and so now I feel like I'm at a place where I can do the side seam um, on the lining because what was happening is I backstitched all three layers of the two outer fabrics. I laid right sides together and then I laid one layer of the lining to it and backstitched. Well, running backstitch um, and then I went to lay the other part of the lining over and it was just all stretching so this is the part I know that Heidi's been asking about and a few others so after I did the entire seam three layers I pressed it because I like to press things I pressed the raw edges towards the back or you could be doing it towards the front. It just depends on which way you put them together. And then I'm folding the back over and laying it down. And now I'm going to fell it down. There's a really good diagram of this in Costume Close Up by Linda Baumgarten from, so the, from the collection of Clint Williamsburg. If you don't have that book, um, it's a must-have, and there's a really good diagram of how to do this kind of seam when you're lining a bed gown or short gown, um, and this is actually how um, the short gown in Clint Williamsburg's collection has the, the side seam done. Yeah. 
I'm going to stop you for a second. Uh, Mary Alice asks if the cut if the cut collar piece per, is, if the collar is cut perpendicular to the grain, um, is that a horrendous mistake, or is she okay historically? If it's cut perpendicular, like this one, right? So, well, yours is cut. Oh, it is cut perpendicular. Yeah. So oh, I, forgot about that. I did the other one horizontal. And then when I went to put it in, it didn't match up perfectly with the stripes going down. So I decided on this one, I'm not going to even let myself worry about it. I'm just going to cut it this way. Yeah. And I'm going to throw in there that usually linen is pretty dimensionally stable. So it depends on your fabric. If you have a lot of give in one way and not the other, then you need to think about it. But otherwise, no worries. Yeah. I think I think this actually will be pretty good. I think it will be yeah. too. Yeah. Now, I did make sure that the stripes will line up at the back of it, though. So I still do get to have my matchy-matchy bit, um, which makes me happy. Um, oops, sorry. So I have it actually, I did not cut the neck of this yet. I have it, I have it basted um, so that I can then cut it open and start to put it in. And what I'm going to do for this, after I cut it, I'm going to fold um, the lining towards itself um, for the front neckline edge. Um, I could trim that out, but I sort of like to have that extra stability in the neckline. So. Mary Alice Hamilton also lined her bit at the back. Excellent. <laughs> yes. yes. Very Struck good. Matching. I like it. So, so I was, I'm torn between whether I want to do the collar right now or do the side seam. Any, any preference? Do you want to see me mess up a collar on a live chat? <laughs> You won't mess up the collar. You, you, you are excellent. So other things that are great about doing stripes, which you might have noticed in the uh, sew along, is that it's fun on the sides to do this with the stripes. Um, yeah. So I'm going to interject too. Yeah. Stripes are so much fun with like bias cut skirts and stuff like that. You <gasps> can do weird things. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So take you out of the 18th century for a minute think about all the applications for stripes so oh my many. gosh yes all right I'm gonna check it one last time and make sure this part always makes me a little bit nervous cutting this part Christina wants to know if you'll demonstrate how to do jumpers oh no she's actually saying jump romp, no rompers she wants to make rompers out of she stripes. can do rompers yeah, she, she can go crazy rompers out of stripes. yes um all right, so yes, that's gonna match up. Great. Well, that looks nice. Yeah, I need to use your scissors because I never. Do you want me? Do you want me to point it down? Sure. So they can... If you, how's that? That's perfect. Okay. Is that good, guys? Yeah. And so I actually basted the um, cut line in, uh, mostly so that when I cut it away, this part doesn't slide down, and I have it basted all the way down the center back, so that side lining. The, the back lining on the sides doesn't shift around. I mean, some of you might have an easier time with this. If I was using a cotton, I don't know if I'd be having the same the same issue. All right. One of the questions that was on um, Facebook that I noticed was someone wanted to know if you could line a bed gown but not line the cuffs. Could you just line the body? And I feel like yeah. there's one, no? Well, if you if you know of it, I know of half lining, and I know of um, I don't no, I just I don't I can't. The ones that I've looked at that are lined, they're fully lined, basically. That one that we saw, you know, from Platt Hall, that was a wrapping gown, was half lined, but it was lined in the sleeves and lined in the body, up to the waist, you know, down to the waist. Um, I don't know that that just doesn't ring true to me you know from an 18th century perspective now as you saw in the sew along I'm going to pin this on and stitch it and then this will get folded in on itself so that this can fold around but I did notice when I was looking at this this reminded me of something really similar that I have in my modern wardrobe can you hand me what's right behind you on the chair Angela Oh, yeah, your famous sweater. Yeah. So Brittany and I both have these in black 
and cream. And I was looking at this the other morning, and it has, this is from a modern company, and it has that same shape um, on it. Yeah, so... I mean, the rest of it's different, obviously, and it's machine sewn, but you still see this kind of neckline um, in things today. So. All, right. All right. You guys are going to have to forgive me if I tech, if I give you a, if I write something, it's because it's her computer. I hate it. I, while I've been working on this um, bed gown in this really nice ticking fabric, um, and I, I think it's really nice because of the quality of the fabric, but also just because there's red in it and I have a red obsession. And I was thinking how amazing this would make up into like a working gown um, and how it would really be a great way to show how the, the back of English gowns are pleated um, mm -hmm. with stripes because there's a there's a tendency with a lot of English gowns with the way they're pleated nowadays by some people to tweak something with the, stri the stripes that makes it a little bit off. But really the stripes make it the easiest way to pleat an English back. You can really just work with them and this would just be incredible. So maybe that will be a tips and tricks one of these days as well. It will be because that's, um, we see so many people who pleat wrong. <laughs> so we'd like to show you how it's done because it really is easy. Um, somebody just asked, and I, I lost the name, it, they said they have a bit of silk that they want to line their center front and their collar, but they want it to be able to show when they flip their collar over like a shawl collar. I get, uh, I'm not sure that you can flip your collar over because it kind of hugs your head. Um, the back of your head. You can if you if you left it like this and you just had, you know, you had the silk on the inside and facing the front of it. And when you put this on, this part would come up way too high. It would come up really high. And so you'd want to actually flip. You could flip this part down in the back and then it would come around like that. If you had it lined, the front part was lined in silk. And I, I've seen some other people have, um, have done bed gowns like right. this. Um, I know like Kitty Kalash. Yeah. Um, I've seen some images of her in her bed gown and she's, she's cut it in a way that she could flip this over. Right. But she's also, her, her pattern's different from yes, ours. It's it is. got the T at the top, which makes it, what are you looking for? I've lost my needle. Lost your needle. I have a packet of them in my thing. Yep. No, it's okay. Um, I had, uh, blah, blah, people want the pleats. They're all about the pleats. Um, I could just pleat the back of English gowns all day long if I didn't have a wonderful job here instead. Yeah. It, um, Brooke, it's, Brooke has been teaching proper way of pleating for many years now. Um, and it's unfortunate. Some uh, commercial patterns and things out there just don't quite get it right. Um, and it really is very simple. It's, but you got to understand it. You have to understand how to finesse the back in order to get the look that you want, but stay on grain. Um, and all of it's based on looking at a lot of original yeah. gowns in the Clinton-Wingsburg collection. Exactly. And elsewhere. You've looked at them all over the mm -hmm. world. Um, okay. So this is this is the, the fun part of, of trying to make a bed gown and just making it work. Um, it doesn't always work where you just cheat this part here. I mean, I wanted to make it go over to here because that's where you the stripe goes. You pull it back just a little bit. Yeah. yeah there you Sorry. Go. Sorry. Um, if you have it here, it looks great, but then it's not gonna it's not gonna make it around the corner correctly. So I'm gonna take it right to there, and that's that that little point. You keep trying to touch your screen. It doesn't touch. Don't touch my screen. It doesn't touch my my screen. Touches and yours doesn't. It's making me crazy. Well, would you like to switch back? No, you have to do those things. Go again. Um, so you guys, I don't know if you noticed that I had a... I don't know if you guys... <laughs> I'm not talking into the microphone either because I'm messing with this computer. 
Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, I'm going to do a, a public service health announcement. I was almost late. Brooke was like, I don't want to start this thing without you. I don't want to do this. And I was saying, well, you're going to have to if I'm not here because I had my annual mammogram. So for all you ladies out there, young and old, don't forget to get your mammogram. And don't be afraid because from what I've had to do, because it was my time for annuals, um, the doctors have been amazing with the way they have kept everything clean and social distanced. And it's been, um, it was actually great because I've never gone through appointments so fast. <laughs> they have to get you in and get you out. So it was great. So again, my public service announcement is young and old, don't forget your annual mammogram. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Via Woodford, mm -hmm. um, she says, I have suggestions for small pieces. My daughter is a healthcare worker. She's having problems with sores behind her ears. Make bands with buttons for the back of the head to hook masks onto. Ooh. So if people have, uh, as we call it, cabbage, um, that they don't have a way um, to use it, that's a great, and there's loads and loads of patterns and videos and you name it online for making the headbands for making the scrub hats and for making every kind of mask you can imagine so it's a great way to use all of our little scraps these days oh i'm i'm like three one sixteenth of an inch off with my stripes oh well i'll keep going doesn't have to be perfect <laughs> so um, one of the fun things I get to do here at Burnley and Trowbridge is when anything new arrives, um, whether it's fabric or patterns, um, like we had some new Augusta stays, patterns come back into stock um, this week. Um, I get to you know, put them into their proper place and update the website. And so yesterday was very exciting in the afternoon because something that we've been without recently has come back into stock. And I know Angela can talk more about why this is great, but I'm gonna show a little bit in case, I don't know if you can see that. Um, oh, but yes, silk. it's our sewing silk. We now have all the colors back in, oh except gosh. for the cream, which is still on its way. Yeah. It is coming. So yeah, that, that was long in coming. I've still got some other things that are on a very, very slow boat, but yeah, we have our sewing silk back in stock, so we're really pleased about that. Um, what time is it anyway? I can't figure out how to tell the time on your thing. Well, it's about time for us to switch places. Oh, okay. It is. Yep. Did, everybody ha did anybody have any final questions for Brooke in respect to the, uh, the bed gown? Other than the fact that it's really pretty and I'm jealous and now I want it. I know several people have already purchased these fabrics for uh, for theirs. And there's some new fabrics that have just come in that you might decide for your second bed gown or your second petticoat. As I know some of you are working on seconds of many things. You can have a whole new wardrobe, two new wardrobes. Mm -hmm. by the end of the season. I know. They may be able to like do switches. They might be able to, to do um, costume changes during our party. That'll be fun. All right. This is, I kind of feel like this is almost a, uh, this is kind of like a Laurel and Hardy <laughs> <laughs> run around the fire truck thing. Yeah. So yeah, we've gotten some new things in. Um, as Brooke said, we got the silk thread back in and somebody asked what weight is it is. It's a number 50. It's, it's thin. It's the kind that you put onto a sewing machine and this will work on a sewing machine. We've always had our quilters and our buttonhole in stock. Um, that's something that we actually have manufactured for us exclusively. So, um, and then, yeah, we got a new product here, which, which, uh, Christina went, oh, because Christina is our stay lady. She loves the stays. And she actually uh, was fortunate enough to go to uh, the School of Historical Dress in England last, I guess it was last year, um, and did a very extended class with Luca 
um, on stays, along with all the the training that she's gotten while she was at Colonial Williamsburg and uh, from Mark, who is has been our, I would consider him a master stay maker, and he was our um, has been our instructor for making stays over the years for our workshops. Uh, with that said, um, we have some new products in, and these are pretty exciting. These are 100% linen. As you know, we've always carried linen tape. Um, these are actually 12 woven linen tape, and I want you to look at the size of this because it is about the right size to go on stay um um, can't think of the word. I want to say channels. That's not right. Seams. Seams. Thank you. Uh, on stay, I told you my my words get stupid this time of day. So yeah, she can show it. Anyway, this this is perfect. Now, original stay tape like this uh, uh, was a combination of linen and silk. Um, but I think there may be some real linen out there and Christina would be a better one to answer that question. I mean, I've looked at a lot of stays, but the minutia of it, I haven't done a lot with. Um, so now I need to go back to all the stays I've ever photographed and look at them carefully. But this is perfect for that. It's also incredibly strong. So if you wanted to buy it as stay lacing or any other kind of lacing, um, it would definitely serve the purpose. We have gotten this in four different sizes. One, one is not here, but we decided to carry it in the one inch, uh, which is nice and wide and can be used for things like uh, petticoats, et cetera, um, or binding, you know, like if you're making a housewife, this would be perfect for that. Um, we also got it in five A's, which if you are really comfortable with it, this is perfect stay binding. Um, some people have been using our plain woven linen, which is fine. This is going to have more movement to it because it is twill woven. So you're going to have an easier time of going around all the little tabs. It'll be easier to go around. And as uh, Christina pointed out the other day, the narrower the tape is, the easier it is to go in and out of those little uh, narrow curves. Um, if you feel you're just frightened and you itch. But this linen tape will be in stock. Uh, it'll be up online uh, probably beginning of next week, uh, first part of next week. Um, so it's something that you're going to want in your stash. So, um, and I guess the other thing is fabric, right? Yep. The fabric, I'll get it. So people have already noticed this one. Mm-hmm. That's the unwashed and this is the washed. Yeah, um, uh, Brooke, Brooke grabbed some of this right away because <laughs> she liked it too. And somebody had asked us about, you know, how um, opaque or, or sheer some of our linens. Some of the lightweight linens, because I think they were asking for like modern jumpers and skirts and things like that. Some of our lighter linens can be a little bit sheer. Um, this one, it, it's hard for you to see, but... Um, you know, you can't really see through it per se. I mean, you would definitely see if you stood in the sunshine. Um, but it, with washing, it tightens up just ever so slightly. And it's pretty perfect. Um, I really like it. So it washes really nicely. Uh, this is our blue and London red stripe. Um, and London red, you have to read my definition to know what I mean by London red. Um, so hopefully, I, I actually, I've been looking at those, both of these stripes because I'm thinking, what can I make out of those that's just like summer clothing? Because they're so lovely. Oh, and see if Christina says, uh, what's those things called she wears all the time? Rompers. Rompers. And for petticoats. Yes, we can. Yes, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was someone on, on the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brooke really wants red linen. Um, and that's a whole nother um, worm or ball of wax. Um, I've put together over the years some um, some research on cotton. 
and recently had a, a friend of mine who, who also accessed some of her information who provided me with even more information and now I've got another access thing that I'm going to do to get even more information but I can document colored linens in the 18th century I know that there's a like a a lot of people that say oh you can only have brown white and natural well that may be more predominant but there are colored linens out there and they are being made into garments because I have documentation to prove that with that said I have several documents that say red linen now we don't know what that red looks like chances are yes it's more of a mattery color than it is a beautiful cochineal red because I don't imagine they're going to use a cochineal on a linen um, but yes we can and it is on the list and I'll let you know when we get it in but the next one that I wanted to show you was this really pretty uh, like light blue and soft yellow linen um, and this one again the you can read about it on our website um, I put a little definition up there for you uh, this is the same weight as that red and blue so it's lightweight it would make a lovely gown um, it can make a summer short gown uh, lined or unlined um, a lightweight petticoat uh, for modern application you know dress skirt that kind of thing so lots of stuff um, one more linen well a couple more linens this linen we've gotten in you know it's summertime and here in Virginia if you lived here in the 18th century, you would be looking for the lightest and lightest colored, lightest physically and lightest colored textiles you could find to make your garments out of. You would leave off your silks, you would leave off your wool to the best of your ability, and you would be wearing linens, and you would be wearing what they called uh, cottons, but were actually linen and cottons. Um, and of course, if you get in the end of the century, then they are wearing cottons. But they're looking for light colors, um, and, e and easy care textiles and so we have been getting in a lot of um, white cottons and uh, different types of white linens and this was another one that I found that was really pretty it is semi sheer um, I'll let, let you hold it up so they can see it's a semi sheer can you see me through it um, <laughs> yes we can see you through it <laughs> Um, and it's beautiful because it has a satin stripe in it, uh, which is about um, a quarter of an inch, and then it has approximately a one inch, like sheer area in between. Now, these type of linens were used for summer gowns. Um, they were used for um, accessories such as aprons and mantelets. Um, they could be, you know, just like a, a triangular handkerchief like a big handkerchief. Um, so they were used for a lot of different things, uh, a summer petticoat. Remember, it is somewhat sheer, so you're gonna want another white petticoat underneath an under petticoat. Um, and if you're wearing it as a gown, of course, if you're wearing it as an open gown, then remember if you wear a colored um, petticoat, you're gonna see that color through um, the fabric. So that was that. And then one more, this one we've had in stock before. This is just a soft sage green stripe. It's very sad in color, um, meaning that it's been dulled down. Uh, it is not a bright green by any stretch of the imagination. And we have had this before and I've actually had a customer that asked if we were gonna get it back in stock. So the answer is yes, we have it back in stock. And mm -hmm. that's... Someone's asking if we're going to get in any um, sage green linen. Which we I have do, sage green. We have sage green right now. Um, and they're also asking, or if we'll be getting in, um, or they're actually on like medium weight sage green linen, and ours is a lightweight. It is a lightweight, um, yeah. Or will we be getting any olive green silk? Uh, we will be getting in some green silk. I've just made a, a, a big silk buy. So stay tuned for that. Um, it'll come in sometime next week, and then we'll probably have it up on the website the following week. So yes, we will be getting in some very lovely green silk, which I think I had a teeny tiny piece, but it appears to be more of a, um, a file 
So we'll see what it's like when I physically get it and touch it and mm -hmm. can play with it. So yes, we will have some silks in stock. Um, the other thing that we got in, yeah. So, wah, 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 very sad. Um, so Sting, Christine Millar, has been making the most phenomenal 18th century, um, I think it's a jacket and petticoat. Yes. Yeah, jacket and petticoat embroidered with grapes. And she bought our beautiful Japanese muslin, which is very sheer, very, very sheer. And I was able to get what I thought was more, only to find out later that I had bought all of it and sewed all of it. And what I got now is a slight bit heavier. It's not as sheer, but it's still incredibly beautiful. It is a very fine, fine Pima cotton. It is semi-sheer. Um, it's not completely sheer. I can still see Angela a little bit. Okay. So it is not completely sheer as the other one was, but it is has a very high thread count. It's got a very fine thread. It's very clear. If you know what that means, it means you don't see any slubbing or anything. Uh, it's gorgeous. So this is beautiful for gowns, um, for definitely any 19th century application you would have, uh, chemisettes, that kind of thing. Um, it's going to have a little bit more body. So if you're doing like ruffles, they're not going to be limp. Um, so it's perfect for that. It um, is also perfect for later period for like doing really nice uh, underwear. All right. Oh, yes. So I will be making a chemise and a corset cover with it for my yeah. Edwardian so, outfit. Yeah. So all that kind of stuff, it would be perfect for. So this is on the site and it's a wonderful price too. I think it's only like $10. $10. Right? Yeah. It's $10 a yard. So, all right. Remember our, co our cotton sateens? We just, I look, they're beautiful quality. They're amazing. We're not going to find them again. These are from a company that it's no longer exists. So I had to buy the other colors that still were there. So get ready for some bright colors. First one. That's nice. Cyan blue. Cyan blue. We called it cyan blue. It's nice and bright. Um, it's gorgeous. Again, it's the same quality as the other sateens that we have in stock. Um, although it's pretty vibrant and I don't see it in an 18th century application, I certainly see it in later period applications. No sweat. This one we called Aurora, and you can go to our website for the definition, but Aurora was a popular name in the 18th century and a popular color. And it's basically a orange with more red in it. So it's, this, it's, it's a sunset. It's a beautiful sunset. Um, so this, again, is... is vibrant and gorgeous and we love it so this is the second one but not for 18th century clothing not for it's just too bright it, it it's too um what's the word it looks like an acid dye yeah. so i just don't i don't see it for the 18th yes. century correction um it, aurora is uh, the color of dawn not sunset oh sorry okay dawn <laughs> um and then the last one we have is called sulfur yellow, okay? And sulfur yellow, the definition at the end of the 18th century, uh, is a yellowish or a greenish yellow or yellowish green. But anyway, it's very much, it's got a very yellow tone to it, but it is a, a greeny color. So greeny yellow, yellow greeny. Um, and this, again, is something that would be more applicable to later period. Matter of fact, I was showing the wrong side. That's the the side mm -hmm. that is, yeah. And I showed the wrong side of the Aurora. They have to see that because it's so pretty. Yeah. No, actually I showed the right side. Okay. So that's that. So those are the three new and you know, when those are gone, they're gone because I've now bought out everything that existed in these sateens. So they're gone <laughs> and they're in my shop. Um, I then got a very small amount of a time traveling fabric that I um, am especially fond of. So I don't know. Some of it might have to come home with me. There is currently only 10 yards of this fabric left. We have already sold five <laughs> yards of it. So let me, sh you have to show it to them. Okay. 
Maybe. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> this is just a wonderful little herringbone. And it has a it has a lavender and sort of a blue in it. And then it's got a little tiny pink fleck. And it just the 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 look of it gives it like a bluey lavender look. And then you just see the tiny, tiny little pinky flecks. So it's it's gorgeous. And it's a really good weight for any type of like if you're doing structured garments, if you're doing later period um uh, doing jackets and, and matching um, skirts or doing trousers and jackets or a waistcoat, uh, ladies' uh, uh, waistcoat, anything like that, um, this is perfect for that. So it's a nice, like a flannel weight. So, And that's all of our fabrics. That's it. Not very many. For this week. <laughs> <laughs> for this week. Um, there was a question about our straw hats. Um, uh -huh. Someone noticed that our straw hat... Um, that they're getting from us now is a little smaller than what we used to have in the past and they've noticed this from other suppliers and they're wondering if this is just what's available or is it more accurate to have it that it's size? It's what's available and it's the fact that it's manufacturer um, um, issues. So it's manufacturer. Um, it is what's available. Um, I don't know who else is selling them uh, but in our case um, this last run came out the way it came out so it's a tiny bit smaller it's certainly not inaccurate um, you need to be more concerned with the height of the crown and the crown height is perfect that's something I remember you were telling me someone was asking if we could do a tips and tricks on how to lower the crowns that's true on yeah, hats we had this we, is something that I would love to do because when right. I was working in the millinery shop years ago we couldn't get hats like what you have mm -hmm. and I was and lowering the crowns on so many hats yeah and now I'm like why did I spend all that time <laughs> exactly um truthfully we had a European customer say to us they wanted to know what the shipping would be to send one hat and it literally was more than what the hat cost and I felt horrible about it and I said well have you tried lowering a crown because they had another straw hat and he said they did but it was too big for their hat but the way that we teach you to do it that's not an issue because you will be able to make the crown what you need it to be. And it'll basically be small like our crown is as far as the diameter of it. And then we'll be able to lower it to a very low height. So if you guys would like that as a future tips and tricks, it's something we can certainly put into our list. And now I got to remember all these things oh, and no, write them down. They're all in. The, they're all in the live chat. Good, you can look at it and, and then you, write them down. Or you could just watch yourself again and remember all of them. Mm -hmm. um, when are we getting new kerchiefs in, or are we getting new kerchiefs in? Someone we missed are, out on one of them. We are. Um, basically, we're getting. I'm working on one new weave. Um, I wanted to do two new weaves, but we ran so far back with the three months of pandemic as far as manufacturing is concerned, that we're playing catch up now. Um, and, and my manufacturer is working on a huge order that was placed before the pandemic, but I don't know how quickly he's gonna be able to get it to me. He's, he's trying. I, I think I mentioned last week that, you know, I have a partner in India um, who's phenomenal. And unfortunately, this was all set up to have everything to us basically during the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, what ended up happening is pandemic, shutdown, and monsoon season now. So that makes it difficult um, to die and do all the processes they have to do because it's done, a lot of things are done outside. So, yeah. But we'll have stuff. We'll definitely have more stuff in. It's just a matter of when it's going to come and I'm going to have something following right on its heels because I'm working on new product too as we speak and we are working on creating the poll for the printed oh, yeah. fabrics yeah um we will have it up for more than 24 hours I know some of you missed the the poll about um our next like little short for YouTube um, but we will give you fair advance and we'll leave it up for a while and we'll probably even have a link to it in our newsletter. So if you're not signed mm -hmm. up for our email and newsletter, you can go to our website and sign up for that. Um, and yeah, I'll be voting for all the red ones. <laughs> As will others 
and blue. It's I, when I've done color uh, polls in the past, it's always been terrible because it's like it's like an even split between blue and red. Well, then you should just do purple. Exactly. Make us all happy. Yeah, there you go. That's true. That's true. Yeah, they're all yelling out blue. <laughs> blue, blue. See, I told you. It's all blue. So, all right. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Yeah. It looks like we're, we, we always manage to fill up an hour. How can you stand to listen to us that long? But anyway, we're glad you do. <laughs> we're really glad you do. Um, as always, we love having you guys distance socialize with us, even though I didn't do much sewing, but, but Brooke did, so that counts. Like five inches. Yeah, well, I did zero inches, so you're ahead of me. Hey. <laughs> um, as always, we love having you guys. Um, please... Uh, Check out, if you're just finding us, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and go visit us on Instagram and Facebook and like us. And be sure to check out our website. It's always changing with new product on our front page. And in the next month, you'll have a brand new website to play with. So, yeah. No pressure, Brooke. No, no pressure. pressure at no, all. Not at all. Not at all. No, no pressure at all. Actually, from what I understand, they're doing such a great job of photographing uh, our inventory and our products is that it's gonna you're going to think you're looking at new products. It's going to be great. We love it. So anyway, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep sewing. And we'll see you again.